Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here to talk on behalf of our online church, God's Online Church of Love. Listen, a lady from uh, a regular viewer who watches us who have been with us for a long time asked if we could discuss a certain subject matter. Now, I was going to try to do this with my camera, but it just takes so long. It takes like an hour to upload a five-minute video, and I don't know how to do compressed uh, recording. So we're going to have to go back to the kitchen. <laughs> Listen, you guys. These are the warning signs for male and female. When you are with... Okay. My lips are dry, sorry. When you are with a person that you're just dating and they're calling you all the time, red flag. Now there's a difference between red flag and run. <laughs> so we're gonna go back and forth. If you have a person that, that when they call you, and you were not home because you were out doing your thing, whatever that was. And they start asking you, well, where were you? I called you. Okay, red flag number two, we're getting close. You know how they say three strikes, you're out. All right. And if they start to get that chilliness on them because you were out with your friends, red flag number three, it's time to call a halt because we're dealing with a person who is obsessive, possessive, domineering, jealous, insecure, suspicious, the list goes on. When you see those traits right at the very beginning, call it quits. You are not that hard up. Take my word for it. Some of you men deal with some of the most pitiful, needy women, and you need to cut it loose before you get locked in. Some of you women deal with men that have those same traits, and you need to cut that loose before you get locked in. It seems to be easier for women to get locked in than it is for men, okay? So, what I want to say about that is, these are your warning signs. You're at the grocery store with your new date. You just happen to run by the store on your way somewhere. And you run into some old friends from church, work, school, whatever. Now, you're male or female. You're hugging a person of the opposite sex. And all of a sudden, the one you're with is as cold as a cucumber. That unholy quietness. Ooh, you can feel the sizzle in the air, can't you? Well, guess what? Run. Chop that sucker off and run. I don't mean it to be rude, but you know what I mean. That's a serious warning sign. From a male standpoint, if the man is all of a sudden really chilly and cold and short, that is a possible abusive relationship. Because when men get possessive like that, oh my goodness, they want you to drop your life. They want you to drop your family. They can't understand why you need girlfriends when you have them. Oh, that's a real danger signal, you guys. That's really dangerous right there. Okay, when it comes to the woman's standpoint, now here you are, a young man, you're dating this, this lady, and every time you turn around, you see somebody you know, well, who was she? Or well, was she one of your ex-girlfriends? She sure is pretty. Well, you look like you're enjoying that hug. Boy, you talk about living on pins and needles. You don't need that. I don't care how well built she is. You don't need it. You don't need the headache. 
you really don't need that headache. It's not worth it. Okay. There's an old song that I used to sing. It's too many fish in the sea. <laughs> okay. You don't need to go through that. Those are the kind of women that every time you're two minutes late from work, you went by a drive-by, got a two-minute quickie. There's just no way you can win with that kind of a woman. She's overly possessive. She's overly suspicious. She's going through your stuff to find phone numbers. She's following you. She's calling you on your job to make sure you're at work. It just gets ridiculous. And that kind of woman can drive you to drink, drive you crazy, drive you to another woman, or drive you to crime. You don't need it. Trust me on that. Now, when I say there's a spirit of seduction, this is what I'm talking about. Abusive, jealous, possessive, obsessive people like that. They're very dangerous because there tends to be a, a thing of uh, you belong to me. Nobody else. You're mine. And if you're mine, prove it. 24-7. I feel sorry for people who live with people like that. People who are married to jealous, tight-fisted. Oh, I, I just can't see how they can deal with it. That is living willfully, on your part, living in hell right here on earth. Okay, now when you're dealing from a man's standpoint and the man is the one who's jealous and you're with that man, do yourself a favor, baby. Cut that thing loose quick because if you don't, listen, this is how a man will manipulate you. He will cry, real crocodile tears. Oh, I mean, you will feel like you are really breaking his heart. It's manipulation. That's all it is. Some people can act. One day when I really feel up to it, I'm going to sit in front of this computer and I'm going to cry for you at the drop of a hat. Put on a whole scene of, of crying, begging a man not to break up with me. Ain't nobody in here but me and the computer and you. I prove to you, you can, you can drop crocodile tears. You really can. There was a guy I was trying to break up with, and I didn't want to hurt his feelings. And he had a little bit of an arrogant thing going. And I could tell he was more vulnerable or more sensitive than I was. So I was telling my sister I was getting ready to break up with him, and I was trying to figure out how to do it. So I led, I manipulated the conversation to the point where the guy was finally considering, well, maybe... It shouldn't go any further. And then I went through this begging scene. Oh, my goodness, you would have given me an Oscar. When I got through and got in that car with tears running down my face, I started the car up, turned my music up, and laughed all the way to my sister's house so I could tell her how well I did. Now, when I say I was unsaved, so I knew how to manipulate. I mean, I still do, but you know how that goes. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't play with that because that's toying with people's hearts. You don't trifle with people's emotions like that. But let me tell you, I played that day and I, I acted very well. I'm telling you to tell you this, if I can do it and I wasn't trying to get anything out of him, all I wanted to do was end the relationship, you know, saving his little male pride. But there are men who can, I saw a man get down on his knees do you know what I wanted to do when he got down on his knees? I want to take my foot and rear it back so far and kick it right up his behind because I knew he was toying with his wife's emotions. He had played on her and committed adultery over and over and over. And you could see the hate, the resentment, the anger in her face. She literally had looked as if she had had a nervous breakdown from the anger and never recovered but she never could get away from him. That was the thing that was, that was the most devastating thing to watch. This was the sweetest, most angelic, kind, tender-hearted young lady. 
I knew her in high school. Beautiful young lady. When I looked at her, she had murder in her eyes. I had never seen a person turn that hateful in my life. She was so full of anger. She looked like a trapped um, animal. Um, a, an animal that was not only trapped, but had killed. And I mean, I'd never seen anything like that before. And that was because this man had played her so much. But because she was so locked in, in spite of the fact that she was so angry and she knew it was a game, she could not make herself walk away. And guess who died an early death? He didn't. He kept playing. She did. Some of the friends don't know if it was suicide or what was really going on. But it was a little fishy. They did a lot of investigation. I don't think it was murder. Because he needed her around him for whatever reason. I think she was pulling a lot of the, the money in the house, too. You know how you women will do when you get needy. You will work and let the man stay home. So he gets his, his cookies, hey, his cake, and he gets to eat it, too. While you're out there, blood, sweat, and tears. Then when you get home, he's wondering why his food ain't cooked. And he's been home all day. Or at somebody else's house playing with somebody else's boobs while you're out there taking care of him. Then, when you come home, if you're a little late or you missed the bus or traffic was a little extra thick, he's pointing his finger at you, accusing you of having another man on the side. Oh, come on, that's the classic manipulation of a man who is playing on you. And they know it. They know they're not about nothing. They're just out there playing every skirt that'll let them. And you're dumb enough to take care of them. You're dumb enough to let them stay under your roof and don't have a baby by them. It's on, man. It is on and cracking. He knows he's got a permanent place to stay because you want your baby to have a daddy. You want baby daddy to stay home with baby. But you're living in hell. Look at the price you have to pay. I'm sorry, baby. Ain't no man that good in bed. I don't care if they can last two hours. Ain't no man that good in bed. So you need to start going to Jesus. That's your only way out. He's the only one that will open your eyes, number one. When you ask him to open your eyes, you really want to see the truth? Okay? You know what the scripture says about the truth, don't you? You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You have got to know the truth, what's really going on. When they get on their hands and knees, and they're begging you, and, and they need you in their life, and their life is, is, is not the same without you, and you complete them, and, and how could they ever live without all oh, get off of it? They'll replace your little stuff under that skirt so fast. They got a whole slew of them out there. They can eeny, meeny, miny, mo and play the same game on them. It's all about having a roof over your head and some free nookie to go with it and not having any responsibilities on your part. Not you on their part. Not having any responsibility. And they play you like a violin, baby. And you dance to their every tune because it's a spirit of manipulation. It's a spirit of seduction. It's a magnetism that works in their favor at your expense. Oh, and what an expense it is. And they keep you dancing, pins and needles, where you've been. Who you been talking to? Who was that around the corner? I know you've been seeing some. They're the ones playing, but they're playing you. And you got the, you are sitting up there going for the okie doke because you are on pins and needles. And you are explaining every time they ask. You know, the first time a guy asked me that, he said, yeah, I bet you were at so-and-so's house. And I said, well, whatever you want to believe, I'm out of here. I'll see you later play it. I 
didn't even try to defend myself because I could care less. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I wasn't doing. And I did not have to explain. Man wasn't paying my bills. Man is not the head of the household. No, baby, you taking care of yourself and him. You owe no explanation. And if you had any kind of sense about you, you would get your heels to clicking and hightail it out of there for good. Because that one is what my father would call. He would refer to a man like that as a good-for-nothing joker, a user. A, uh, let me see what else did he used to call him. Um, those things that stick to your skin and they suck your blood. A leech. Ooh, he used to use that word all the time. A leech. Oh, yeah. A leech with a ding-dong. Oh, they, they, they ring your bell, too. You can ring my bell. Bell, ring my bell, ring my bell. Ding, dong, ding. And he dings it, too, boy. And you just come running. <laughs> yes, baby, what do you want? And then he treats you like a fool. And you accept it. And you let him. And you stay. That's the part I don't get, baby. Why do you stay? Okay. I've done picking on you and fussing. Because the next thing, here's your next warning. When he starts hitting, if you don't get out then, you may stay long enough, just long enough, to die at his hand or to watch your child die at his hand. And if a man knows he can do whatever he wants with your child after he's done whatever he wants with you, Oh, he's got you. He owns you at that point. Just like the devil. Huh. I hope that gives you chills. Because that's what it's meant to do.